Hey, Mike at On Point here. How many of you have opened up canned uh, Sage 300 Timberline Crystal Reports and run into these kinds of screens, these kinds of links, and just uh, said, okay, I'm out of my league? Here's the good news. It's, it's not that bad. This morning, well, today, we're going to cover a couple of uh, basics, a couple of foundations. Stuff like this is just an extension of, of that fundamental. That's the good news. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this because we're not going to go here today. In, in case, though, you're wondering how, how I did get here, um, let me get rid of that report. I opened up a, a project management RFI form, and, and this is the form in Crystal. And we're not going to do this one today, but I'll show you how I got there. Within the forms, there are a variety of sub-reports for a variety of different reasons. And I, I double-clicked on the first one to edit that sub-report. Uh, within the sub-report, then I went to database and, and database expert. And I see the t different tables that are that are in that particular sub-report. And I went to links then to see how those tables were joined. And that then is the issue. How are these things joined? And that's what we're going to talk about this morning. We're going to break it down to concepts. We're going to grab a simple report. We're going to break it and we're going to fix it. That's going to help you understand what's behind this. And let's get rid of that monstrosity because we're not going to go there. We're going to get started with a very simple report. We're going to go file new and we're going to do a blank report. And I actually, to get us started, I made up a little database in Microsoft Access, all right? And I made a vendor table, and I made an invoice table. Now, tips and tricks, I'm holding down the control key to get the tables I want all at once. I'll add them. There they are on the right. You'll notice I have an opportunity to link them. If I hit that now, I go to links. Otherwise, I hit OK, and it says, I don't care if you hit me or not. You're grabbing two tables. Link me. In my example, I am going to, well, first of all, I'm going to separate those two tables so I can clearly see the link between them. I'm going to highlight that link by click, clicking on it, and I'm going to delete it to get started. This is a very important concept. I'm going to put the vendor table on the left, and I'm going to put the invoice table on the right. I'm going to put them with different horizontal levels so it's easier to link. I'm going to left click on the vendor ID, hold down the left mouse button, drag to the vendor on the right, and I'm going to leave it there for the moment. All right, then I'm going to hit OK. We're going to come back to that, OK? These are all very important concepts. Uh, I, I would just watch this the first time or two and then come back and take notes and, and, and look at more specifics. Now let's look at our tables. I popped open in Excel. What I did is I created in Microsoft Access two tables. I created a vendor table and an invoice table. The vendor table I've got hitted, highlighted yellow table on the left, invoice red table on the right. In the vendor table, I've got two rows, two records, <clears throat> one, two vendors, 200 and 300. On the invoice table, I've got three invoices, one for vendor 100, one for vendor 200, one for vendor 300. They total $850. Now, let's go back and run our report. We're going to pop back into our fancy report here. You'll see if I go over to fields, I've got the vendor and the invoice. Quick review, if we go to database expert, and then to links, I've got the vendor on the left, the invoice on the right. All right, we're going to hit OK. I'm going to then come over here and add. I'm going to grab the vendor ID from the invoice table. You, and, and there are rules around that. We, take, we talk more about that in the beginning crystal reports, classes that we do. I'm going to then grab the vendor name off the vendor table. Again, we'll talk about where you grab fields from in our beginning classes. And then off the invoice, I'm grabbing the invoice number and I'm grabbing the invoice amount. So let's take a quick look. I've got my, my vendor ID, my vendor name, my invoice number, and my invoice amount. Uh, we're going to do a quick adjustment here of our field lengths to make that a little prettier. 
It's all about the pretty, right? And there we have it. And I'm going to right click on amount and say I want to insert a total. A sum is a grand total. Again, crystal, beginning crystal to cover all that. Now, when I run him, you'll notice he comes to $700. Now, important concept. You always take your, your custom reports and you, you compare them to another source to validate your information to review it. Maybe, maybe this is the equivalent of a canned report. And you go, but wait a minute. My total invoices were 850. What happened? And you run, you run through it, and you realize that for vendor 100, he's missing. Okay. It all comes down to where our tables are and the joins, and that's the important concept here. We're not getting all of our invoices returned. So let's go to sheet two to to take a look at what happened. Right now, we've got our our we've got different scenarios here. By the way, these different headings. Right now we've got this scenario. We've got our vendor table on the left and our invoice table on the right. All right, now if we pop over to him and I go over here to database expert, here's my vendor table on the left and my invoice on the right. And if I double click on that join, he's an inner join. See that little guy, joint type, inner join? So let's go back over to our to our simple look at easy to comprehend uh, scenario here or, or demo explanation. Actually, I'm here on the inner join. An inner join means give me everything in both tables if what you linked is on both sides. All right, and remember we linked on the vendor ID only, so it it, it looks down the table on the left, and that's what we call the the table that's read in its entirety. I've got the vendor table. On the left, it's reading it in its entirety. And it's going, all right, vendor 200, are you here? And are you here? If it does, it returns everything. If it's not on either side, it doesn't return anything. Then it goes down to the next record on the table on the left. It's reading this table in its entirety. All right, vendor 300, are you here? Are you here? It returns it, boom, it, it gives me that number. And then that's, that's then consequently what we saw on our total here. Now, if we go and we make our database an inner join, it's 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 close, but it's not close enough. I'm sorry, a left outer join. I'm sorry. If we make it a left outer and refresh, we're still getting 700 bucks. We're not getting everything, and the reason for that is. Here's our left outer scenario. It's going, <clears throat> give me everything on the left and give me, give me the information on the right if you find it. So in this case, it's returning the same information. Okay, give me 200 and give me what is on the right if you find it. I've got, I've got vendor 200, give me the 250. I've got vendor 300, give me the 450, but it, 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 didn't, it didn't have 100 on the left and that's the issue. So from a report standpoint, what we have to do is come over to our to our design and go back and go to database expert go to links first thing I do is I kill that link I right click I go to delete we're gonna put the invoice table on the left and we're gonna then link the vendors I'm gonna hold down my left mouse button on that vendor and I'm gonna link the vendor ID. All right. Now, a little more information. Notice the connector here. He's a little dot. All right. That's an indicator. He's an inner join. Will an inner join work for us? Well, let's let's find out. I'm still getting my seven hundred dollars. But then let's find out why why it's not working for us. If we come to Excel here. I have my invoice table on the left and I have my vendor table on the right. That, that is indeed what we did. But remember, an inner join says read all the information. Well, the fact that the invoice table is on the left, it's reading all the information from the invoice table and it's only returning it if it finds it on both sides. So it read that $100 invoice uh, vendor ID, but it didn't find it on the right, so it did not return it to the report. Very important concept. 
An inner join only returns both, or only returns it if it finds it on both sides. So we're, we only returned seven hundred dollars. And I just realized I've got these wrong. This needs to be an inner. I did that to demonstrate it for you. Do you believe that? I wouldn't either. And this needs to be a left outer. There we go. So my inner join is only returning these two records because it did not find the 100 on the right. All right, enough of that. Let's go back and fix our report now. All right, we broke it. Well, we didn't design it right, and now we're going to go in and fix it. We're going to go in and say database expert links, and I'm going to double click that link so I can get to my join type, and I'm going to make it a left outer. A left outer says, give me everything on the left and return what you find on the right if you find something. So let's go hit OK. Boom. There's our at 50, 850. We're happy. And looking at our Excel table to demonstrate that, it says, give me everything on the left. Give me all of my bloody invoices and return the vendor if you find it. All right. Now let's find out what our report did. It said, give me everything on the left. Now, remember, our, our invoice ID came from, I'm sorry, our vendor ID came from the invoice table. Do you see that? AP invoice underscore vendor. All right, so it's giving us everything on the left. There was no vendor name because it didn't find a vendor on that, on that vendor table. And it's giving us then uh, the invoice number and the amounts because it's on the left. The vendor name was on the right. In case you're curious what I had done is what popped into Microsoft Access. And I just quickly put together a couple tables. Here's my vendor with vendor 200 and vendor 300. And here are my invoices. Three invoices, one for this missing vendor and two other invoices for vendors that exist. That's all I did. Now, how could this happen? Well, maybe you archived a vendor or moved them. Maybe you moved a vendor and the invoices were still there. Maybe there was a data integrity issue. Uh, you know, things, things happen, and that's what we have to think about as a report designer. I hope this is helpful. Uh, please, 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 we are uh, holding a free conference this, this April 30, May 1st, for uh, anybody that's on Sage 300 CRE Timberline. Uh, we've got expert speakers that have, well, the same ones that have spoken at, at the TUG and Timberline Insights and Summit Conferences, Sage 300 for all of these years, uh, as well as consultant conferences. Uh, it's free. It's, it's for you, Sage users. We've, we've selected speakers as well as courses that are designed to help you uh, with information to get through the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, it's about giving back to a community and a career that's been good, good to all of us. Uh, so hope you'll join us. Check it out, onpoint-software.com forward slash spring20. Hope this is helpful. Uh, there's a lot of great information at this conference, and we're, and we're here to help uh, this, this coming Thursday, Friday, as well as in the future. Thanks. Bye-bye.